Hello. Hello. Oh my God, it's a press conference. It is. This is Thank you. Machinery over here. Welcome. Thank you for having us. How are you guys? Oh, I like the old school Star Wars. Thing. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So obviously we have lots of new stories to look forward to. What do y'all want to see fans that at this point like, have been skeptical to kind of help get them on more of what to come? You know, I don't think we'd ever presume to promise you're going to like right, anything yeah. we do. We hope you do. And I think what we'd say to them is we love these characters as much or more than you do. So... You know, we, 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 we treat this very seriously, and we know how, how emotionally attached you can become to characters, especially after six years, and that's how we feel. So we haven't taken anything lightly. We're going to keep the, the legacy of the show and the history of these characters alive, and that's going to be a really important part of the show as, as we move forward with this, this new chapter. So when you were in the room we were discussing what this would be like, did it feel like they're getting a facelift or refresh? It felt like a really nice shot of Botox. We no, all, um, all got it. I, I would say this. This was an idea we've had for a few years. Um, but when we sat down to write it last year, I would say that it really, um, we felt re-inspired. And we felt reinvigorated because we were free from the six years of mythology and things we did before. And we could start going back to what we really loved, which is, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And we've never shown this. And what's this person's backstory? So for us, it was, you know, it was great because we got to end the show the way we wanted to last year. And we get to continue to have fun telling these stories in new worlds with the characters and moving forward. Yeah, and it's also the, the introduction of all the stuff that's new is giving a wonderful shot in the arm to some of the stuff that was older that we've been doing for seasons one through six. And it's giving us a new prism to tell new stories with these characters that everyone you know has loved for so for so long um so it's kind of had this ability of bringing what's new and then making what's old new again which has been really really neat i'm surrounded by flashes <laughs> are you two different or are you just racing back and forth <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm back. Wait a, wait a minute. You guys switch seats. Again. And again. All right. Um, well, I think the details we can tease is, you know, as you saw today, Henry uh, leaves home. He's in a new book. And uh, I think the relationship between him and Cinderella I would say is in the vein of the epic romance that Snow and Charming did. I would say that, you know, Regina is in a, a new chapter of her life. Um, I would say we could tease that we are going to see Tiana. We are going to, um, we are going to meet a new Alice in Wonderland. You know, and I think one of the things I'm really excited about is um, we're leaving Storybrooke and going to Hyperion Heights. So we're going from a small town to the big city. Um, and for us, the original idea of the show was fairy tales in the real world. So for us, it's fun to go back to a place that doesn't have magic, you know? So it isn't magic, magic all the time. So where Storybrooke was a, a small town that was just these fairy tale characters who were cursed and hidden away, Hyperion Heights is a part of Seattle. So you have fairy tale characters now mixed with the real world and real people who don't have a magical background, who aren't cursed, so yeah, it's, and, a, it's a different vibe, and it's, we're excited about it. And I would say that, you know, one of the things we could tease is, uh, you know, Hyperion Heights, like many neighborhoods, is being gentrified by uh, Lady Tremaine, who is an evil developer. And uh, she realized that, you know, I think that in her mind, um, she pushes the fairy tale people out, then they can't find each other because maybe that was one of the weaknesses of the first curse. If you keep everybody in the same place after a while, people are going to find each other and remember. If you spread them out and get rid of the neighborhood, then you know it's a lot harder. So we've seen some season one, season seven like parallels in some of the previews. Is this going to be like season one where these characters that we know don't remember the last six years? I, I would say, like, without getting too specific yeah. about all the details we're not redoing season one yeah so 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 
we're sort of taking, you know, uh, some of the ideas that we're going to echo, but we're going to be going in new directions with them. So the rules that that maybe you've been used to over the first six seasons might have some twists in them, and there might be some different things, you know, different effects. This isn't the same curse that we did in season one. These aren't the same characters, and it's not being done for the same reason. So, you know, we're going to be, you know, hopefully surprising the audience in, in you know, what our, you know, villains are doing, you know. Like, unlike season one, where we saw, you know, Regina cast the curse in the pilot, we actually don't see who casts the curse in the premiere this year. So that's going to be something that, uh, you know, may not be something you want to take for granted. We know Adelaide's team is going to tease anything about... I can just tell you who she is. I don't even have to tease it. She is Drizella. She is a wicked stepdaughter. And she is awesome. Adelaide is so wickedly good in this performance um, that, that uh, I wish she could have been here this weekend. Um, but uh, that's who she is. She's Drizella. Hyperion Heights got a lot of history to it. Yeah, it does. Give us some, uh, or not. Well, uh, David's first name was Booklin. Yeah, but that didn't work. Um, you know, it, it is a nod to Disney history and, and the Hyperion studio where Walt Disney was originally located. In fact, the building we write the show in is from that original Hyperion studio, which is the only building from that studio that was moved to the current Disney. It's called the Shorts Building, and Burbank. it was literally brought over in two pieces from the original one. So we, you know, we always want to honor uh, Disney. I live a few blocks from the Gelsons. That is on the site of that yeah. uh, the original Hyperion Studios. It still has the dwarf co dwarf cottages right down the street. But we haven't aired yet, so David could win out on Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. <laughs>